Hello everybody, in this lesson, we're gonna see how we can handle missing data within our data set. Now, in order to do this, we're gonna be working with a new data set. It's called the Messy Data Set. You can get that down in the GitHub. I'll have a link in the description. We're gonna need a new library for this called TidyR. This is part of the Tidyverse, and they have functions that are specifically created for cleaning up data. And so we're gonna be using that in the next several lessons as we look at different things that we need to do in order to clean up data. If you haven't already installed it, you can just install it like this. It's install.packages and then Tidyverse in quotes, and then you'll have access to tidy r it'll look just like this but i'm going to go ahead and get rid of this because i have it right down here for you now let's go ahead and bring in our data set we'll take a look at it so i'm just going to run everything really quickly and we're going to take a look at our data set so going through our data really quickly we have customer id customer name email transaction amount transaction date and category now when i'm looking through this I can just at a glimpse see very easily that there's several issues. One, we have some null data, so there isn't any data in here. Now these look a little bit different than this in the transaction amount, numeric versus string. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. We also have a transaction date, and these are all different types of formats. That doesn't look good, so we need to fix that up. We also have a category, and in this category we have like capital electronics, lowercase electronics, and maybe some different spellings as well in here. So we need to clean these things up. These are all things that if I was working with this in a real data set, I would be taking a look at these, trying to standardize dates, as well as take a look at this data and see, do we wanna do something with the nulls or the blanks? Because sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. So let's come right back over here. We're not gonna get to everything in this lesson because you know they do have different use cases. We're just gonna be looking at missing data. So to get started, let's come right down here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check our null values within our data set. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do call and then sums, and we're gonna take a look and it's basically just gonna summarize. Uh, we're gonna do is NA and then pass to our data frame. We're just gonna summarize for each column, which ones have no values or blank values. Let's go ahead and run this. Now you'll notice on here we have customer ID, customer name, email, transaction amount, but we have no blanks in these columns. But if we look back here, we know that in customer name and in email, we have blanks, uh, we see them, but it's only showing up for transaction amount. Now that has to do with just how it was pulled in as a data set. Now we can actually fix this very easily by coming in here and passing through a parameter called na.strings. This is going to take the blank fields and make them na. So we're just going to hit tab. And we're gonna pass through a vector here and we're just gonna say if it's blank, then comma make it na that's all we're doing so for these blank strings if they're blank we want to make them na let's read this in again we'll overwrite our previous data set now let's look at our data frame and now you'll see that these are na as well this is just something that sometimes you have to do kind of somewhat manually you have to specify you want that to be done but now if we run this you'll see we have one, one, and two. So this is a lot more accurate. Now within this data, sometimes what you're gonna wanna do is just get rid of it. So for example, let's say we're creating an email list and we say we have to have this email available. Otherwise, this data is just not useful to us at all. So what we wanna do is we wanna actually get rid of this data. So what we're gonna do is, let's come right down here and let's create, we'll do data frame cleaned. We're just gonna create a new data frame but all we're going to do is we're going to drop that row if it is blank. So we're going to say, uh, we can take the data frame and we'll use a pipe here. And then we're going to say drop NA. And that's right here. And you can see it uses this tidy R. And it's just going to drop the rows where any column specified contains a missing value. So we're going to come here and we're going to specify the email column. And if you remember, we have this email right here. So let's go ahead. Let's run this. Let's take a look. You'll notice we have one less row. Let's take a look at the data frame cleaned and we'll compare. So now we only have 11 rows of data compared to the 12 before. And now we don't have this customer ID 109, which is uh, Helen Carter. We have 109 completely gone. And so we just got rid of that data. 
That is a perfectly acceptable thing to do depending on the use case for your data. Our use case was we're creating an email list. It's pretty hard to give an email list to somebody to email out if that person doesn't have an email. So we just got rid of it. And that is a perfectly acceptable thing to do. And I'm actually gonna put up here, I'm gonna say uh, remove rows when no email is present. Now, another thing that we could do is we could actually fill in this data. So for example, we have transaction amount. And let's say we need to use this transaction amount. For example, in transaction amount, let's assume that when it has NA, it's actually a zero. It means there was zero transaction amount paid here. Maybe they got a full discount, but this would be contextual. It would be, we know that when it says NA, it's supposed to be a zero. So we just want to populate this with a zero. Now this makes a big difference when you start doing aggregations on it. Now we looked at aggregations and grouping. When you have a zero in here, that zero is going to be counted in that aggregation. And so if you just did zero and 99, then the average is gonna be about a 50. If we have NA here, this does not count towards the aggregation, so it would just be 99.99. So let's go ahead and do that first option. Let's go through here and let's populate these with zeros. Let's say that's our use case for what we're doing. So we need to take this column, this transaction amount. And so we're gonna come right down here, we're gonna say data frame. Then we're gonna do a dollar sign and this is just a shortcut of specifying the column name. And we're gonna do transaction amount. And we just wanna say when the transaction amount is null, then populate it with zero. So we're gonna create a bracket here. We're gonna do is dot na and we're going to pass through this exact column so we can just copy this so we're saying when this column is blank then what are we going to do we're going to populate it with a zero and that's it so let's go ahead and actually real quick let's do this on data frame cleaned glad i caught that otherwise we'd be doing that to our original data frame so let's go ahead and run this and let's go back to our data frame cleaned and you'll see 0, 0.00 and 0, 0.00 and that is fantastic. When we go to aggregate this, these zeros are going to be counted because now they are numbers, they're not null. Now, sometimes that's not what we want to do. Maybe we know that NA means it just didn't take the data incorrectly, but we want to count it as an actual sale. We know that it wasn't zero. It's a non-zero number. Maybe it's 50, maybe it was 100, we don't know. But we don't want to populate it with a zero because that's going to bring down our averages and we know that can't be correct. So what if we just wanted to populate it with the average value? We can definitely do that as well. Let's come back here and let's redo this really quick. Let's overwrite and we're gonna go like this. It should bring us back to how it was before. So this is just the first option to populate null numeric values. Now we'll have a, our second option. So we're gonna take this column again, this data frame cleaned. And in fact, we need this whole thing. So let's just copy this down. And we're gonna populate it by going like this. And now we're gonna say, take the mean of the transaction amount. So we're gonna say mean, and then we're gonna pass through just the transaction amount. So let's get rid of this. And Let's make sure we have our wrap on so we can see it all. So now we're taking the average of this column. Let's go ahead and run this and take a look. Now it isn't populating it and I have a feeling we need to pass through another parameter here, which is na.rm. It's basically gonna say when you're taking this, make sure and check that it's the correct one. Otherwise, it may not evaluate it to NA when that is what we're looking for. So we wanna say that's equal to true. And we're gonna run it just like this. And now we have these values populated. Now, if we go back at Charlie Brown, he had NA and so did Ian Brooks. So let's come right here. We have 180.2656, 180.2656. Now, when we run this, these people, Ian Brooks and Charlie Brown, are gonna be included in the aggregation 
but they won't change the number for just looking at averages. Now, if we start doing other things and other types of aggregations, of course, it's going to change the output that we're looking at specifically for averages. These people will be included, and we can also run counts on them to know this is how many sales or counts we made. So that is very much an option, but you need to be really, really confident that what you're filling in is accurate and useful for your analysis down the line. You don't want to put this in here and maybe just leave it in there because someone coming behind you is not going to understand that that's what that is. So you always want to keep an original data frame. You always want to kind of document what you're doing and why you're doing it because otherwise your analysis might not make sense down the line. Now, some other data that is missing is right here. This is a customer name. Now, we don't have this full customer name and maybe we don't have another data set or another part of our database where we can pull that in. And maybe we just want to pull in Emma. Maybe that's all we know and that's all we want to do. But, you know, people's emails aren't always accurate. So maybe we just want to fill this in with unknown. We know that the customer has a name. Everybody has a name. We just don't know it. And that isn't necessarily the most important part of the data. They can still reach out to this person via email and say, hey, customer or whatever it is. So we're going to put unknown here. And this would be something that we would have, and this is a small data set, but let's imagine we have 100,000 rows of data. Maybe there's you know, 200, 500, 1,000 people with no customer name. We now can just specify that, and so we keep it in the data set, but it isn't just blank. And so let's see how we can do that. We're gonna come here to data frame, and let's actually pull it in just like this. Whoops, I'm just messing up here. Let's pull in this data frame cleaned. And now we're gonna do customer name. Isn't that what it's called? Yeah, customer underscore named. And let's pull it in right here. Now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna say if it's blank, so we're gonna do is.na, and then we're gonna push in here or, or pass through in here our customer name, just like we wrote it. If it's blank, then instead of a number, we're gonna do unknown. And so that's it. We're checking if it's blank, and we're passing through unknown if it's not. This again, safeguards against other things you might do later on when working with this data set. Sometimes when you're working with nulls and you're putting it into a CSV or you put it into a data set, those get dropped. I know for, ex I know for instance that if you put certain data that has blanks into something like MySQL, those rows just get dropped in some instances. And so you want to be careful about leaving things blank, even though it's you know inconspicuous, it's just a customer name, we don't need it. Sometimes you just want to populate it just to make sure that if it's being put in other systems, it doesn't get dropped or deleted in some way. And so these are some of the ways that you can handle missing data within R and within your data frame. We're going to call this one a populating text or character columns. And so I hope that this was helpful. If you haven't checked it out already, I have a full course on R for data analytics. We go even more in depth into handling missing data as well as a bunch of other data cleaning techniques. I will leave a link in the description as well as a coupon code if you would like to check that out. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I will see you in the next video.